I used to live in the square. I lived here for a long time. I'd probably still be living here if the landlord hadn't thrown me out. I did a lot of work here, wrote a lot of books. It's a noisy square, but I rather liked the noise. It was a sign that life was going on outside. It wasn't solely the noise of Lambrettas and Fiat's, it was the noise of men at work, men making fake antique furniture or genuine beds. I felt I was part of the work and my work was somehow useful as their work. I used to wander this square among the parked cars, looking for the right word and sometimes finding it. When I felt more than usually depressed, I would look up at these putti or cherubim and take pleasure in the fact that two of them seem to be making the communist salute. Very Roman. The Rome of the spires and the steeples and the towers that look up to the eternal truths. But a city isn't built in the sky. It's built on dirt, earth, dung, copulation, death, humanity. The district called Trastevere, which means Trastevere, the Trastevereni, the people of Trastevere, regard themselves as the true Romans. Beware of imitations. And when you read Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, and he says, enter a Roman mob with sweaty nightcaps, thinking of garlic, then you know you're dealing with the Trastevereni. This is the district where I live and work, and these people are self-sufficient, totally different from the posh Romans you find on the Via Veneto. What is really surprising about this city is its continuity of culture. There's a line, a way of living, a way of thinking, and nothing is thrown away. Things are just added and super added. Probably Rome has changed less in 2,000 years than Manhattan has changed in 20 years. As for the future, our poet Belly seems to think that Rome will always be here. Well, at least until the Day of Judgment. And the Day of Judgment will be somehow a Roman event. The final words spoken to the earth as the universal dark descends will not be Gute Nacht or Bonsoir or Good Night, but Bona Sera. When the long annals of the earth are done and Christ's creations melted into shit, the Antichrist will crawl out of his pit and preach the dirty word to everyone. Cursed with a wall eye that the blessed will shun a giant body and a face unfit even to have tomatoes held at it. A prodigy, son of a monk and nun. The prophet Enoch will lambast the liar, Elijah too. They'll spring out of a hatch in St. Paul's church between the nave and choir. Satan will slither up from hell to snatch his share, snarling it out with the Messiah. And Rome will be a plucked up cabbage patch. Around Earth's imagined corners, let angels regale us with a brass quartet, capping that concord with a fourfold shout. Out, everybody! Everybody out! Then skeletons will rattle all about, forming in file on all fours, tail to snout, putting on face and flesh until they get upright to where the judgment seat is set.